He's also a triathlete. He chose uh, hot uh, environment races to race in. For our next uh, speech, I'll call uh, Shayma Al Khaldi. She is the assistant director of exercise and sports science department. Uh, Shayma, she um, holds a sport dietitian uh, certificate, so she has a high diploma. She's the first citizen uh, in Qatar, and we are proud uh, to have uh, an aspita to hold a sport-specific uh, dietary uh, certificate. Uh, Shayma, please. Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to welcome you all in our first GCC Sport Medicine Conference. I hope that you enjoyed uh, your two days conference with us, and I hope that you will uh, benefit and enjoy my lecture regarding, sorry. Oops regarding sport and nutrition. In my presentation, I will cover different areas in sport and nutrition to start with an overview of sport and nutrition, uh, what are the regional nutrition uh, issues in the sport field, and what are the nutrition strategies and the plan to deal with these uh, nutrition issues. And then later on, I will give you an example for um, a pathway within ASPITAR uh, for a multidisciplinary team. At the end, I will um, give you a slide of take home messages. I would like just to mention that the Sport and Nutrition Department or Sport and Nutrition Unit is a discipline in Exercise and Sport Department uh, in ASPITAR, uh, which are also include other disciplines such as uh, Sport Psychology, Sport Podiatry, uh, Strength and Conditioning, uh, Physiology and Performance. I would like to mention uh, also that and this is slide that sport and nutrition has evolved far behind carbohydrate, fat, building muscle, recovery, protein, supplementation, vitamins, weight management, and, uh, and weight loss. Now it is much more. We believe as a nutritionist and as practitioners that uh, sport, uh, that nutrition is a, dip, uh, um, is a discipline and is still in its infancy. And the sport in nutrition is embryonic. So uh, what, is this, what is the sport in nutrition? A sport in nutrition is the practice of a nutrition and diet as relates to sports um, and its physiological principle. Good food choices will not make a medical athlete into champion, but poor food choices may prevent the potential champion from releasing his or her, uh, her potential. We already know that physical activity, athletic performance, and recovery from exercise are enhanced by optimal nutrition, which means recommended of appropriate selection of food uh, and fluid timing of the intake and supplementation choices. However, still many unanswered questions and great steps remain to be made. Moreover, we need to know that the knowledge of clinical nutrition is important and critical in helping athletes with uh, a medical condition that can affect the performance. For example, in um, cases of a chronic iron deficiency, we need to refer uh, the athlete or the patient to a specialized clinical dietitian for more investigation and assessment and plan. And nutrition may not be able to, pre to prevent injuries uh, related to overuse or improper training. However, in nutrition can play a role, uh, can play a role uh, in how fast an athlete recover. And this slide, uh, I want to show you what are the regional nutrition uh, issues in the sport field that we are facing here in our daily work clinic with an athlete or in a club and federation. It is just an example. We are not limited to these uh, issues. To start with, uh, the first issue is the high energy intake. Uh, which is, as we know, as a nutritionist or a sport dietitian, that it is related to inadequate food habits and 
food choices, especially from fast food, and also due to sleeping habit, which will affect the meals through all the day and will lead the athlete to drink more and to eat more food through the night. Second issue is dehydration. Uh, the dehy even we are living in a regional with high temperature and high percent of uh, humidity and the athlete tend or the normal people tend to lose uh, uh, flow, per high percent of a fluid uh, still our athlete is not attending to drink enough water either through the day or even uh, through a tra a training Second issue, a third issue, sorry, vitamin D deficiency and iron deficiency. Iron deficiency, it could be also, as I mentioned, due to the inadequate choices of food and also inadequate habits. For example, we attend in our culture always to drink uh, 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 drinks that is inhibitor the iron absorption like tea, especially after, uh, directly after our meals. And our population from youth, they tend to drink a lot of energy drinks here. Uh, regarding uh, the vitamin D, sorry, regarding the vitamin D, it could be due also to our culture, uh, clothing which will cover most of, of, of our body, and also due to the, uh, the dusty and uh, the um, uh, pollution in the weather which will not allow the UE index to reach to us. Ramadan and fasting is one also from the issues as it will affect our uh, timing of food, our type of food, and, and even our quantity. We tend here uh, or in the region to eat different meal or different type of food in Ramadan, which it is high in sugar, high in carb, and high in fat. Other beliefs. We attend to hear always uh, stories and uh, from our athletes or from our patients regarding, for example, um, why you are not uh, drinking uh, water. I cannot uh, drink water with food because uh, I will have a belly uh, stomach. Uh, for example, either the effect of carbohydrate, if they want to lose weight, they will start to cut their carbohydrate and as athletes, they need it for their energy. And other uh, beliefs of the, uh, the relationship between a tomato and a fluid retention in the body. So we have to conclude, we can conclude that poor food choices day after day can lead to deficiencies resulting in um, a, a chronic condition such as iron deficiency and low bone uh, mineral density. After knowing the issues that we are facing here, we need to implement our nutritional strategy, our plan. First, it is important to understand the sport and its nutrition needs. And we have to know that there is no single consensus document provides all the guidelines and recommendations needed for consultation with athletes with regards to sport and nutrition. So we need a combination of guidelines uh, should be used to individualize the nutrition management of athletes. Culture, ethic, and religion practice of athletes must also be considered to develop a realistic nutrition intervention. Don't forget also the importance of uh, uh, integration of many different disciplines such as psychology or physiology, which will become a minimum mandatory set of disciplines uh, for the athlete's benefits. And athletes need a nutrition prioritization plan to suit their training load, goals, and competitions. So we need to have sport-specific and nutritional uh, strategies and a plan. And before implementing our nutrition strategy for any region, we have to go through steps. To start with, observation. We have to observe our culture, we have to observe our region, we have to know the specific need of the sport culture and the daily lifestyle of athletes. Then we will go with a screening, a screening as a medical screening. We can do testing for athletes, a blood test, and also a nutrition assessment to, do the, to know the diet history and to know where is the deficiencies. Uh, as, and, and we do this through our uh, screening department and hospital, yearly screening department. Then they will refer the, the athlete to each discipline for intervention. As we know, the early screening can be part of the preventive strategies uh, against the injury. After uh, 
observation and screening, we will evaluate the needs, and this part should be repeated. So we need to re-evaluate upon the changes and the progress. Then we will focus on education, 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 either as individual or as a group. After all these steps, then at the end we will do or we will focus on doing prioritization, a plan which will be unique to the person. I will give you now like an example for uh, nutrition support for exercise induced injuries. As we know, most of the injuries may be influenced by nutrition through different stages, uh, healing, recovery, and returning, return to activity. The diet composition should be carefully assessed and the changes uh, need considered as the injury heals and activity pattern changes. Deficiencies of energy, vitamins, minerals, and protein will impair wound healing and intensify, intensify loss of muscle and tendon mass and function. For the specific, sorry, for the specific needs for the healing and recovery stage for the injured athlete, we have to focus on energy balance. Should be the aim during reduced inactivity due to injury. As we know, excess uh, energy could lead to increased total and fat mass. The pattern of a protein intake in terms of timing and amount of each meal is an important factor. Essential amino acid supplementation has been shown to reduce loss of muscle mass and strength. If we will speak about um, other new trends, include but not limited uh, to creatine, omega-3 fatty acid, and antioxidant are new trends that are proven to help um, wound uh, healing and recovery from injury. Moreover, uh, many micronutrients such as zinc, vitamin C, vitamin A, and other uh, can also improve wound healing and recovery from injury. Supplementation on top of all these of sufficiency is unnecessary if a nutrient status is adequate. If you will forget all my slide, I hope that you will remember this picture. This picture is related to sport nutrition and sport nutrition support, either for injured athlete or for a performance. So we have to know what is the base of our cupcake. It's the adequate carbohydrate protein, which will improve by 30% the performance of the athlete. Then we will go with hydration. We mean by hydration is the fluid. It will improve from 15 to 20%. Then we will have the supplementation either by creatine or amino uh, uh, essential amino acid. As I mentioned in my previous slide, the first uh, the outline slide, that I will speak about an example of a multidisciplinary team. We have in SPTAR a care pathway for ACL um, patient, injured patient. In this team, we have doctor, physiotherapist, sport rehabilitator, physical coach, a sport dietitian, and sports psychologist. Uh, this team, the multidisciplinary team, will assess the patient or the athlete every six weeks, each in his area. So for example, the sport dietitian will uh, assess the body composition and will uh, do the meal plan accordingly. This team will meet weekly to take an action according to the patient and athlete condition. To end up with my take home messages. First, the base of a nutritional strategy for an athlete injured or not injured should be a well-balanced diet based on a whole food choices. A nutrition strategy for athletes must take account of the fact that each individual has different nutrition goals and needs. Periodized nutrition is the furry font of practice and the sport dietitians have become an integral part of a sports science team. Thank you.